Okay, we'll get started here. Um, thank you guys all for joining us. Um, my name is Casey Russell, and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager at the Matsu Convention and Visitors Bureau. As Alaska starts to reopen here, we thought what better way to highlight uh, the road system than the virtual road trip up and down the rail belt. Um, as we are starting to reopen, um, we're doing it safe and responsibly, and we're asking our visitors to do that as well. Um, so what we're going to do today is kind of highlight what the, the, some of the things that you can see and do in your own backyard. Uh, we'll be going all the way from Fairbanks down to Homer and everywhere in between. So, so before we get started here, just a few things to go. Um, I have everybody on mute. It just keeps it a little bit more organized that way. Um, feel free to use the Q&A uh, uh, feature as well as the chat, and we'll get to some questions towards the end if anybody has any questions. Um, and we are recording this, and it will be available on the Matsu CDB website, which is alaskavisit.com. And I'll also make sure to send a link out to all of our panelists, and they can share with uh, their communities as well. So with that, buckle up. We're going to start uh, start the road trip, and we're going to start in the Golden Heart City up in Fairbanks. And we'll be uh, meet Scott. So this is Scott McRae with Explore Fairbanks. All right. Well, thank you uh, so much. Uh, Casey and Yahoo Matsu for putting this together. Scott McRae, Director of Tourism from Explore Fairbanks. You know, typically when I we get this chance to participate in these statewide endeavors, they almost always go from a, a south to north in order of presentations. Um, so I'm used to being the closing act or if Kathy Hedges is online participating second to last. So I don't know if there's more pressure in being the opening act or the or the closer. So give it my best shot here. So well, we are well underway with our midnight sun season up here in Fairbanks. In fact, today, uh, March 29th is our first day where the sunset is actually at midnight. Um, and certainly the midnight sun and our amazing temperatures, you know, we all in, in Alaska were fortunate in those long hours of daylight and they just get more extreme the further north uh, that you travel. So great conditions up here. We've got temperatures this coming weekend in the high 70s. So for our fellow Alaskans out there who might not have made it past Denali in terms of on the road system. It's a, you know, a great time of year to come up and enjoy the, really the great outdoors of interior Alaska and beyond. And uh, just a wide range of activities that we have available from taking a walk in the woods with a herd of reindeer, uh, soaking in the hot springs out at Chena Hot Springs, paddle boarding on the Chena River, uh, panning for gold and so much more. So of course the big question, just why we're doing this today is, what's open, what's going on. And I think, you know, a lot of our tourism businesses here and across the state are still kind of figuring out summer openings in some ways, but we just launched, and this is perfect timing for this presentation, Casey, we just launched this week our Explore Local uh, campaign. So at the uh, Explore Fairbanks website, explorefairbanks.com, I should have done the backslash Explore um, Local. Um, we got a link there that provides, uh, we've got a spreadsheet that we're updating on a regular basis of what businesses across interior Alaska and Denali um, are open for this summer. Not just which ones are open, but what do they have in place for safety guidelines? What new protocols, guidelines are they following to ensure that visitors who are coming to um, experience their product are going to be safe? That's a big thing visitors are going to want to know right now is what those guidelines are. So it's a pretty comprehensive list and the, the campaign itself has a lot of really cool um, elements to it from social media. We've got videos of local um, locals uh, from talking about the parks and recreations in Fairbanks to exploring downtown um, and a lot more. So it's a real cool. We're pretty happy about the this campaign as a way to encourage not just people in Fairbanks to experience what Fairbanks has to offer, but our friends across the state. And then finally, I know we're at the end of the rail belt, but we're not the end of the road here in Fairbanks. We've got about 500 more miles of road north of us. So maybe this is a, be a great summer for somebody who wants to make that iconic trip and go across the Arctic Circle. Get your picture taken in front of the Arctic Circle sign. Drive across the Yukon River Bridge and see the Yukon River on the only bridge in Alaska that goes across the Yukon River. Um, really the Arctic, if you look at a social distancing destination, you can't get much better than traveling up to the Arctic where not only are you, is it very easy to be six feet away from the nearest person, you could be six miles away from the nearest person. There's just, I know a lot of people don't ever make that trip up there. You know, those of us who live here in Alaska to go up and see what the Arctic has to um, 
has to offer. It's just a, a pretty spectacular part of the state. And this seems to be a pretty good summer to get up there and see all that it has to offer. So um, yeah, again, go to that website there. That's the best place to go there. We're, um, lots of good updated information so we can see as things change and, and go on. But we look forward to welcoming um, our, our friends across the state to come up here and uh, see what Fairbanks has to offer. So thanks again, Casey, for putting this on. Thank you, Scott. We appreciate it. So now we're going to take a little drive south from Fairbanks and we're going to go to Denali. And with us today is Vanessa Juzak of the Denali Chamber. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yep. All right, well, um, it is a beautiful, sunny morning here in Denali. Um, and I've already seen quite a bit of traffic this morning coming in um, for the weekend. Uh, things are changing and evolving here on a pretty regular basis. And so um, we do have a couple um, sites for people to go and check what the newest information is. Um, our homepage, which is Denali Chamber, actually splits into two separate homepages, one for the visitor center information, which is at that discoverdenali.org links to that page, and then a separate one for the chamber. And, um, but on the homepage, there's also a button for what's open. It takes you to a graphic of, of who's open now and, and who's opening through June, July, August. And then additionally, um, we have each listing within our visitor center side that has um, something next to the name of the business that is either open or opening, um, you know, June 13th, opening July 1st, so that each business that's listed um, has exactly the information needed for people who are browsing. And um, so uh, next slide, if you would. Uh, there's been a lot of questions about what's happening in Denali National Park, and this is a quick summary, but this is also available on our website. I spent the morning putting together a new page, actually, that has all of this, so I just posted that in the chat, and I'll continue to update this um, as updates come in from park headquarters, and um, their reservation system has been down as they figured out a lot of these details. Um, but it should be opening fully for bus reservations for private vehicle access, which is a really new and exciting thing for Alaskans. Um, and then for their campground reservations as well um, on Monday. And uh, the campground reservations, um, some of them are already available, such as Riley Creek, um, but the rest of those um, haven't been um, because they were still figuring out a lot of those details. Um, the, the bus tours into the park um, will not start until July 1st. And so private vehicle access um, will be available at least through that date, but potentially um, farther into the summer as they work out some of those details. And those private vehicle access um, will be done on a reservation system. And you will essentially have a, a time when you'll be able to um, pass the Savage Station checkpoint um, based on when your reservation is. And the reason for that is to still allow um, the, the amount of traffic and then spacing between that traffic um, that they would traditionally have for some wildlife corridors. Um, but a very neat um, opportunity uh, for Alaskans that knock on wood um, won't ever come again. So um, we're really encouraging people to, to come up and um, experience that. And we can go ahead to the next slide. And so this is the graphic that you'll see on our social media and as well as on our website. And um, we'll keep updating this, um, but the details for each specific um, business are available on the website um, when you go to their page. And um, I'm updating this as almost daily, actually, as information comes in from businesses. So um, we'd love everybody to, to come see us quite often, um, you know, we get, were used as a gas station stop or a bathroom stop on that that travel between um, Fairbanks and Anchorage and a um, lot more to offer than what meets the eye on the highway so come check us out and um, if you have any questions info at denalichamber.com. Excellent thank you Vanessa we appreciate that. So now we're going down to a small town with big views and 
uh, an unforeseen power outage of about an hour ago. So Katie Gilligan will not be joining us, unfortunately, but uh, she did send along all of her information here. Um, and it's also in the Matsu Valley, so I represent Talkeetna, so happy to pinch hit for her. So uh, for those of you who haven't visited Talkeetna before, um, why not? It's a great, great little town. Um, it's located about two hours north of Anchorage and four hours south of Fairbanks. So it's the location and natural features uh, that draw people from around the world to this tiny little town. Um, the proximity to the Alaska Range makes it the jumping off point for climbers, hoping to summit Denali at the highest peak, as well as flight seeing operations, and those are hoping to get closer looks at the mountains, glaciers, and the rugged terrain of the entire Alaska Range. Uh, the views from uh, even downtown, the views of Denali are just amazing. They draw amateur professional photographers from around the world. Uh, Taki is also located at the confluence of three rivers, the Chulitna, the Susitna, and the Talkeetna. And so the waterways are a hub of activity for fishing, rafting, jet boating, and in the winter, a lot of cross-country skiing. Uh, while the pandemic has caused uh, everyone to make a few changes this year, Alaskans will still be able to get out and enjoy the majority of the activities that they know and love, um, especially in Talkeetna. Um, it's a great, like I said, it's a great outdoor recreation hub, um, fat tire bikes, rafting. Um, there's the Talkeetna Lakes trail system is great for stand-up paddle boarding. A lot of hiking opportunities and fishing. Um, for lodging and accommodations, uh, the campgrounds there were uh, packed this weekend. Uh, there's two big ones, the Talkeetna Camper Park and the Talkeetna Boat Launch Campground. Um, the, the largest accommodation is the Talkeetna Alaska Lodge, and um, that is actually opening up today for the season, so we're happy to hear about that. Um, but if a hotel or a camping isn't your thing, there is a, a wide variety of lodges, bed and breakfasts, small inns, so there's really something for uh, everyone in Talkeetna. Uh, for activities and tours, some of the more popular ones include a lot of the flight scene operations, uh, obviously hiking, uh, jet boat trips, rafting, uh, fishing. So just a, a ton of things to see and do in Talkeetna. And we encourage you to make a little stop off the spur road. It's 14 miles off of the Parks Highway as you travel north and a perfect uh, daytime getaway from Anchorage or even an overnight. So uh, definitely don't miss out on Taquita. And then that brings me to me, which I will cover the rest of the Matsu Valley and why we say Yahoo Matsu. So coming south from Taquita, you'll go through Willow and then on to Wasilla and that kind of group these into different regions here. So from the Willow to Wasilla region, uh, the outdoor recreation, Nancy Lakes State Recreation Area is a perfect place if you're into um, kayaking, canoeing, camping, that kind of thing. It's a series of over 100 interconnected lakes that with easy portages and public use cabins from the Alaska State Park System. Um, a lot of camping and fishing opportunities along the Parks Highway south from Taquitna. Um, we also have a, a lot of number of great museums um, and most of those are planning to open right after uh, July. So Stay tuned for that. Um, the Wasilla Museum, Museum of Alaska Transportation and Industry, up north, the Taquitna Museum, um, all worth the stop. And this is also the home to a lot of Iditarod mushers and the Iditarod headquarters. So a lot of them offer kennel tours. Um, the Iditarod headquarters opened uh, this week. So that is open with limited hours, weekend only at this point. Uh, but it is open and uh, they do have cart rides. Uh, it's very quick stop. You can be in and out in about a half hour. So but it's definitely one that you don't want to miss. On the Matanuska side of the Matsu Valley, we have Palmer, the Kinnick River Valley, and Hatcher Pass. So I'll start up in Hatcher Pass, which is just one of the best places that you'll visit in Alaska, I think. It's got amazing hiking, um, Reed Lakes Trail, the Summit Lake Trail, Gold Cord. All of them are just um, high alpine setting, only 15 to 20 minutes away from Wasilla and Palmer, so very accessible. Um, and you can just get lost out there and, and enjoy it, uh, a summer afternoon. Um, Independence Mine State Historical Area is up there as well. And so that was the country's largest gold mining operation right up until World War II. Uh, with the war effort, they closed the mine down, uh, briefly reopened right after the war, but never to the uh, volume that it had done before. But the buildings are still there. It's definitely a, a must see in the Matsu Valley. Uh, and then in Palmer, the visitor center and doubles as the town museum, and they have a fantastic garden there. Uh, so it's worth stopping in, completely free. 
Uh, you can go through the garden, see some of the, the large crops, as well as the uh, many flowers and different varieties that they grow here. And then out just outside of Palmer, you have Kinnick Glacier, which uh, is kind of a destination in itself. There's a lodge at the end of the road there, uh, but a lot of ATV tours, helicopter tours, um, jet boat tours that go right up to the base of the glacier. Um, and in, in the case of the helicopter tours, you can get out on the glacier and do a track up there. The whole region itself is where you, most of your vegetables come from. Um, so there's a lot of farm to table experiences with the local restaurants as well as farm tours. And then a little, I guess a little bit technically off the rail belt, but worth the drive is the Glen Highway National Scenic Byway. Um, this is one of those where you, everybody says, you know, oh, the, the drive is worth, or the, the drive is worth the, uh, the, the trip itself because of the scenic beauty that it has. Uh, just outside of Palmer, you have the Muskox Farm. They just recently underwent a $1.4 million renovation. The building is just absolutely beautiful. It's an old colony barn that has been completely restored. Uh, so you can learn about the farm and its mission to domesticate muskox. Um, along the way, there's a lot of roadside lodges and inns, of restaurants, and as you get closer to the Sheep Mountain and Glacier View areas, um, you can trek on Matanuska Glacier, which is a very inexpensive and fun family activity, as well as raft the Matanuska. So they have everything from white water to scenic floats offered there. And in the upper reaches of the Matsu Borough is Lake Louise, um, definitely a boater's paradise, a lot of uh, fishing, and that's a good place to visit both in the summer and winter. So with that, now we are going to go on to the big city and we're gonna invite in Tia Froley. Okay, hello everyone, thank you. Yes. Love that picture. Yes, thank you. I am, I have to admit, uh, I am addicted to reindeer hot dogs and I can't wait for our vendors to pop up their umbrellas here on 4th Avenue and get my punch card going. So with that, again, my name is Tia Fraley with Visit Anchorage. And yes, Anchorage is open. And I know a lot of, of you come to Anchorage to do shopping. So whether you're coming to Costco or maybe you're coming to REI or maybe Nordstrom Rack, um, I would like to invite you to visit some of our locally owned and operated shops and you know support some of our small businesses while you're getting those that toilet paper or you know water from from Costco but also our Anchorage Market and Festival is open on the weekends every Saturday and Sunday they have limited it to 80 vendors this year so to give space um, and then Spinard Market over at Chilkoot's parking lot they open this Saturday so we are excited to still have our, our markets in place here. And then of course we have that dining that's available. So wide variety of choices, whatever your comfort level is. Some of our restaurants are still doing takeout. Some are at 50% and some are at full capacity. And if you want that local dive bar, they are open now too. So again, whatever your comfort is, uh, we have that here in Anchorage. And of course those breweries, I don't know about any of you guys during hunkered down tried to make their own home brew like I did. I have decided it's best to leave it up to the brewers who do it fantastic here. So we have about 13 breweries here in Anchorage with these amazing decks that are now open. So we've had such a fantastic spring weather. Um, so hopefully I can join you for a pint on one of these, these decks soon. And then we also have, you know, maybe you want to come to Anchorage and stay in a, an accommodation, maybe stay night, stay the night in downtown Anchorage and maybe have a special birthday or anniversary or girls night out. All of our accommodations are open and they have specials for Alaskans. Whether you want a unique, you know, bed and breakfast or a boutique hotel, or maybe it's your first time to stay at the Hotel Captain Cook or Alaska Resort. But such as, you know, maybe Copper Whale Inn, a b and right in downtown Anchorage, they're offering um, in June, you get breakfast at Snow City Cafe, one of our favorites. So they're all adding some extras here um, to stay with them. And it's, the prices are like you've never seen in June before. So come, come stay the night in Anchorage. And then of course, um, our attractions and tours are beginning to open here in June. So to give a a couple opening dates, the Anchorage Museum opens June 5th, the Alaska Native Heritage Center June 12th. If you wanna come see our wildlife here, the Alaska Zoo and the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center are now open and are getting some new babies in. 
And then the Anchorage trolley, ding, ding. We can't wait to have Cyrus on the corner of 4th and F. He starts on June 1st. So bring your, your family and have a fun one hour city uh, trolley tour, or maybe have visiting friends and family. Make sure to check that out. And then also in June, there's a June window art walk. So 20 different windows of different uh, companies here in Anchorage have decorated their windows. So take a walk and maybe visit some of these small businesses. And then of course, our visitor information center, what we do here uh, at Visit Anchorage is make sure our visitors know what is open and what's going on. We are due to open that July 1st. But as you can see in this picture, the flowers, our flowers were planted this week. So we're super excited um, that we're in full bloom now. But the big question is, what is going to be on the hillside in that mystery garden on 15th and L? So if you have any guesses, go ahead and put that in the chat. That is kind of what we're looking at here in Anchorage now is what is our hillside picture? Also, anyone out for hiking, as we know, locals, we have all these beautiful uh, communities that we're hearing from. We have amazing hiking trails. So with the Chigat State Park in our back, uh, backyard here in Anchorage, I know I've started a new hiking list for the summer. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, we have over 280 miles of maintained trails. So maybe hit a new peak or two this summer. We have lots of options here. And then what about fishing? The kings are in. I'm super excited. I'm going to try to go get one myself. And if you haven't met Dustin at the Bait Shack, which is right located at Ship Creek, he has what he calls Creek Candy. So maybe you can get some of that and, and catch maybe your first king or maybe plenty of kings. So and brag to all, all the other locals here. And then again, I want to say maybe go out fly skiing. Our friends at, you know, Russ, they they service our, our national parks here. So if you've never been to maybe Katmai National Park or maybe Lake Clark National Park and go into bear country, uh, this could be the summer to do that. Uh, Anchorage has the busiest float plane airport in the world to go do that. And in Katmai, maybe you can go meet Holly, the fat bear champ of 2019 and, and watch her eat some salmon. So again, um, as we say, check out our website that keeps you current on what is happening here in Anchorage, which is at anchorage.net, but also all the travel deals that are happening with our members are there at the plan your trip slash travel deals. And if you want to even stay more current, you can get on our local uh, e-newsletter. It's Anchorage for Locals. And bi-weekly, you will receive what's happening in Anchorage, what activities are open, the outdoor adventures you can experience, any local events, that are happening and more. So make sure to go to anchorage.net, plan your trip and Anchorage for locals and sign up for that e-newsletter. So with that, my dear friend is gonna connect us, who connects us all together in all these different communities. We're gonna give a choo-choo and a hello to Miss Heather. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for the lovely introduction, Tia, and to Casey. Thanks for getting us all together today, and happy sunny Friday, everyone. Um, I am going to start off with telling you a little bit about what is happening with us this summer at the Alaska Railroad. We, of course, want to be your ticket to Alaska Adventure, um, and I'm very fortunate to be able to connect together those two communities of our friends up in the far north with Scott and coming all the way down to, of course, the Matsu, into Anchorage, and all the way down to Seward. So tying together both South Central and Interior Alaska. And I'm happy to share that it is definitely an all aboard. We will be up and operating for the summer season. And on the next slide, we'll look at what that schedule looks like. All right, so we do have a little bit of a revised summer schedule. Our official startup now is July 1st. So we'll start the Coastal Classic on July 1st, as well as the northbound Denali Star Hurricane Hybrid Train. So we have um, made the decision this summer to absorb that 55 mile track stretch from Talkeetna up north to Hurricane, and we'll still be running flag stop service, but that will be on board the Denali Star. So that northbound daily service will start on July 1. Now, July 2, we'll start the official daily service coming down south from our friends there in Fairbanks. 
So we'll start daily southbound Denali Star Hurricane Hybrid train service. July 3rd is the launch of the Glacier Discovery. So Glacier Discovery departs daily out of Anchorage. We do of course stop in Girdwood, Portage as well, which is a great connection for the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. Then we head out to our friends at Phillips and out in Whittier there, as well as some other friends to the Spencer Glacier Whistle Stop, where we will be partnering this summer, of course, with our friends at Chugach Adventures, and then out to the Grandview area. And uh, we talked a bit there about the Hurricane Turn Train. We will have more information for you about that online, or of course, you can reach out to me with any questions. And we are going to run through September. You'll see the dates here for the revised you know, closing down just a bit earlier than we had planned, but September 7th for the Glacier Discovery. September 13th will be the last round trip Coastal Classic Day. September 12th for the Denali Star Northbound and September 3 for the Denali Star Southbound. And of course, right after that, we will start up our regularly scheduled winter service. All right, then on to the next slide. So we are getting a lot of questions, of course, about what travel will look like on board the Alaska Railroad. And we are working hard at putting together some great information to share. And we'll have that out for you next week on our website. There we go. You can see the website there. So alaskarailroad.com, passenger dash information, as well as we are going to launch some great Alaska Railroad specials with partners along the rail belt. So those will be live next week. So please check our website if you're gonna be out and about traveling, which we sure hope you will be. Um, of course, we connect you to some amazing partners, you know, our friends up in Talkeetna or out for a marine wildlife and glacier cruise in Whittier or Seward. Go meet some sled dog puppies out at Talkeetna, rafting out at the Spencer Glacier Whistle Stop. Of course, the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center, our flight seeing friends in Talkeetna, getting to Denali all the way up to Fairbanks, of course, and even some new partnerships with um, some friends that are doing trips out to the Matsu Glacier. So very excited to have all kinds of ways to connect folks to lots of day trips and adventures along the rail belt. With that, I say thank you for letting me join today and on to our next presenter. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate it. Um, so next up, we're going to go down to Whittier, where everything is prettier. And we have it here um, with Lisa Cruz. Are you with us there, Lisa? OK, let's see here. Are you with us there, Lisa? Can you unmute me now? Yep, I got you. There you go. OK, good. Sorry about that. Um, well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Whittier, Alaska. Uh, we like to say that getting to Whittier is just half the fun, and we have a few updates for you on how to get to Whittier and then also what's happening in our cute little town. Um, so along the Seward Highway, it's no secret to Alaskans that construction happens every summer, and we just want to make sure that folks are aware of it. There will be three main points of construction this summer. Uh, one just south of Anchorage, one just south of Indian, and then the bridges south of Girdwood are having some construction. So there could be delays along the highway. Um, it's a good idea to plan extra time while you're driving and just take advantage of those unscheduled photo stops is what I like to call them when you're heading down the highway. Um, you may have heard during the course of the winter there were a number of projects happening in the Whittier Tunnel. They were drainage improvement projects. Those were all completed ahead of schedule at the end of April, so we're happy to be back up and fully operational. The summer schedule is 5.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. And if you're advising folks on how to navigate the tunnel when they come to Whittier, just remember this catchy little saying that you have to be there on the half hour. And the tunnel opens on the half hour going from the Anchorage side to the Whittier side, and then it opens at the top of the hour, leaving Whittier, coming out with the final tunnel exit at 11 p.m. Uh, the tunnel did not increase any of their tolls for 2020, so if you have uh, Whittier chamber maps on hand from last year, those tunnel fares are the same. If you would like new maps, go ahead and put a note in the chat or contact me directly 
um, either through the Whittier website, which I will put in the chat when I'm done here. It's visitwhittierak at gmail.com. And you can uh, send all of us uh, a request, and we'll get those mailed out to you. As Heather noted, the Alaska Railroad will be starting their Glacier Discovery Service on July 3rd, and we are certainly excited to have the train coming down to Whittier, and they won't have the traffic delays, so hop aboard the railroad and get a smooth ride down to Whittier. Um, there's also a number of shuttle services providing coach service if you choose not to drive, or like I said, if you want to take that opportunity to, to drive to Whittier, just plan a little extra time. Uh, we did touch base with the Alaska Marine Highway. They are scheduled to begin service on the Kennecott July 1st. There will be 15 sailings, and those sailings will um, go from uh, Whittier to Cordova, uh, Kodiak, and then down into southeast before they come back up to Whittier. So it's a little bit of an extended schedule with 15 opportunities. And next slide, please. So. Another catchy saying we have in Whittier is, at the end of the tunnel, the adventure begins. And we are ready for visitors. We are following the state's plan to reopen Alaska responsibly. I'm sure all of you have a hot link to that on your website. If you'd also like to take a look at what Whittier is doing, uh, we have a COVID-19 page. And on that page, it lists all the many businesses in Whittier that are members of the chamber that have provided their revised start dates. So if you're interested in kayaking, that starts June 1. Uh, the jet ski tours have been operating since May 15th. Helicopter tours, June 15th. Uh, there's rental car service open. If you have friends or family traveling uh, via ferry into Whittier, they can pick up a rental car in Ava at Avis. The Harbor Store, the restaurants, the Inn at Whittier, those are all open. Lazy Otter is providing their water taxi service, their sightseeing tours, and their cafe service. Um, June 1st for everything, but the cafe has been open now and on a private charter basis they've been operating. And then we also have uh, my company, Phillips Cruises and Tours. We're going to start on summer solstice weekend, June 20th, and we will have some specials for Alaska residents posted in the next week on our website as well. We have our Klondike Club which is for Alaska residents. They always get a discount on our tour, and they get points towards the free cruise. And um, when you come to town, just you know, m be mindful that Whittier is a small community. As you know, it's just about 200 residents. And we do ask that people are following all the guidelines that are in place, which might vary from business to business. So each business will have signage at their location that we do ask visitors to um, recognize and follow as they're in town because we are such a small community, but we do get quite a large number of visitors. Um, along the harbor side, for those of you that have your own boats and are planning to fish, the Harbor Master's Office will open on June 1st, and the bathrooms are open. There's public restrooms right along the boardwalk there. There will be additional restrooms opening on the 1st, and if you're a camper and you'd like to come to Whittier and camp, the Whittier Parking and Camping Campground is open and also at the head of the bay, I believe on the last slide, Casey, I think that said June 5th for the head of the bay. So yes, June 5th, thank you. <laughs> and we can roll forward to that last slide now and I'll wrap it up here. Uh, we do have a cleanup, head of the bay cleanup scheduled this Saturday. If you feel like stretching your legs, coming out and helping our community at 1 o'clock, we're meeting. Um, meeting up at the Whittier campground. We're going to keep social distancing in mind. Um, masks are recommended if you would like to wear one. You certainly can. Um, we would love to have visitors come join us. And so the link to both Chamber of the Commerce and the City of Whittier are present for you. And we would just love to have you keep us in mind as folks are traveling about this summer. And I'll roll back to you, Casey. Excellent. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, we get to go on here down to the Kenai. So we're going to visit with Jonna Beach. She is with the Kenai uh, Chamber of Commerce. So let me. Okay, are you with us, Sir Jonna? I am. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jonna Beach. I'm the President and COO of the Kenai Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center. Um, I'm happy to report that today the sun is shining and the birds are singing. Um, so it's always a beautiful day here in Kenai. 
Um, visitor Center is open. We actually opened up on May 18th right into our summer hours. So Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then Sunday, noon to 5. Um, so if you're in town, cruise on by. The one thing I do like to say about Kenai, it is um, like a seven layer dip. We're rich with history from the Kenaitse Denina, Captain Cook, Russian Orthodox Church, oil and gas, commercial and sports fishing, and it's the home to a thriving community. Fun fact, uh, Kenai actually was proclaim proclaimed as the oil capital of Alaska in 1968 due to the Swanson River find. It was because of this find that Alaska became a state, so we're very proud of that. Um, we have been known as a village with a past and a city with a future, and also uh, the best place to Alaska. So um, here in Kenai, we do offer boutique shopping, local restaurants. We have breweries. We have wineries. Um, everyone is starting to reopen, uh, kind of in line with what Lisa said. Please make sure when you come down, um, you adhere to the protocols that the businesses have put into place. Um, Making Kenai your home base while you travel around the Kenai Peninsula is a very smart choice. The reason I say that is Kenai is located two and a half to three hour drive south of Anchorage or a 20 minute flight. And we're also two hours from Seward and an hour and a half from Homer. So if you make this your home base, you can day travel out and come back and partake of some of those local restaurants and breweries. Next slide, please. Thank you. So in Old Town Kenai, we do have a walking tour uh, where you can learn of the history of what makes Kenai who we are. Make sure you stop by the Historical Cabin Park Tuesday through Saturday, 2 to 5 p.m. Shout out to the Kenai Historical Society for all of their hard work preserving the history of Kenai. Cabin Park is made up of homesteading cabins. And one of the cool things about Alaska is typically when you talk about homesteading, it's centuries. Um, we actually were homesteaded here in the 50s and 60s, so you can see how people lived kind of within some of our lifetime. Um, also on that walk through Old Town is the Russian Orthodox Church, as the photo on the slide is there. You can swing by, take a photo. Um, sometimes they'll have the rectory open. You'll be able to go in. And right across from the Russian Orthodox Church is Veronica's Cafe. It is housed in a, an historical building they have really really like to die for carrot cake and a make amazing coffee so swing by veronica's cafe kenai is also known as dipnet central annually july 10th through the 31st but we have beautiful beaches that are here year round um, you can hunt for agates walk fat tire bike um, if you are coming down for dip netting please be sure to download the dipnet kenai app it's an amazing app that started about three or four years ago, lots of great information on there. Um, another great thing that started back in 2017 is the city of Kenai launched the Eagle Cam, the Kenai Eagle Cam. And so our eagles have returned this year. They took last year off from this nest and we're in a different one. We are expecting the eggs to hatch any day now. So you can live stream this off of our website, kenaichamber.org, the city's web page, kenai.city, or to the City of Kenai's YouTube channel. It's very exciting. Um, so if you're not traveling just yet, you can still get a little bit of Kenai in your home. Next slide, please. Thank you. And so looking forward um, into September, again, we kind of get that some people are not willing to, to travel yet, and that's okay. You can plan for September. So we will be hosting our annual, fourth annual Kenai Silver Salmon Derby, um, Tuesday, September 15th through Sunday, September 20th. We are doing cash prizes for adults and youth. And the great thing about this fishing derby is the magic weight is actually spun for every night. So it's not necessarily largest fish with wins, smallest fish wins. Um, so it's really, really exciting that we're able to bring that back. Also, um, September 27th, we'll be hosting the 12th annual Kenai River Marathon. We have a 5K, half marathon, full marathon, and a relay run. Um, it will be known as a flat, fast course. And um, that's kind of everything that I have wrapped up. For more information, you can call us here at the Kenai Chamber, 907-283-1991, or go to our website, kenaichamber.org. Thank you all so much. Thank you, John. So now we'll uh, cruise down a little bit farther down on the peninsula, down to Seward. And with us today is Kat Sorensen of the Seward Chamber. 
Hey, Casey. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming out and listening to all these great presentations today. I'm over here in Seward, where it is also beautifully sunny. I think it just hit 70 degrees on my outside thermometer, which is bizarre. Um, but we have plenty of things going on in Seward that are perfect for day trips, weekends away, or even a full week down here. Um, so much different things to offer. Um, Casey, if you want to head to the next slide. So currently we have the first signs of some reds running through um, the river down here. So people are out snagging. If you have some free time this weekend and want to give it a shot, you can head down and do that. We also have charters heading out of um, our harbor for halibut fishing and they'll be going um, all summer long with modifications. Keenan Fjords National Park opened up last weekend. The gate, the final gate from um, Exit Glacier Road into the park is now open. They'll be doing modified uh, visitation this summer. So instead of full park rangers and um, programs, they'll have a park ranger on site for safety purposes, but then pretty much the rest is like choose your own adventure what, once you're out there. It'll be a good opportunity for Alaskans to explore a national park with a lot less visitors and be able to do it on their own. If you do want to explore the national park in other ways, Major Marine started their first uh, cruises out into the glaciers, into the fjords this past weekend. They've been having a lot of good luck with wildlife, spotting orcas, humpback whales, and then going out and seeing um, different glaciers. We also had an insane um, calving incident at Bear Glacier two days ago. So icebergs will be floating out into Res Bay for the next couple of days from that. Uh, if you are looking to get on some hiking and running trails throughout the summer, our trails are fire right now and not fire season. They're just really, really great. Um, the Mount Marathon Race Trail, although we haven't made a decision on the race yet, is in some of the best shape I've ever seen it, especially the down. The Lost Lake Loop is completely open and ready for running, um, mountain biking or a beautiful hike. We have some other great trails in the area that are just really dried up um, from all the winter. All the snow is gone and they're ready to go. Um, the Sea Life Center downtown is open. Uh, they're accepting reservations online and you can buy the tickets there and then head in and enjoy an afternoon exploring all of the sea life that Alaska has to offer. Our city and um, private RV parks and campgrounds are open as well. A lot of them are following different mandates and decreasing their capacities, but um, at the core of it, Seward's open for business. A lot of different businesses are offering Alaska residence deals. So if you're calling or booking, I'd recommend um, checking with that and seeing what they have to offer. I know there's a lot of great deals on kayaking trips or sightseeing trips. So whatever you would like to do or whatever you've always wanted to do in Seward, now's definitely the time to call and ask and see what they have deal-wise. You can head to the next slide. And then looking forward um, for planning a full summer in Seward, we are moving forward with our 4th of July celebrations. We're hoping to hold those in a smaller scale. We obviously won't be having the Mount Marathon race, but we do plan on having different smaller events circled around celebrating our country's independence from fireworks to um, outdoor shopping and um, food trucks to my personal suggestion of a softball tournament because I love softball. Um, we're hoping to have a really fun weekend celebration down here for Sewardites and Alaskans as well. So stay tuned for what that will look like. It'll look different, but we still hope it'll look fun. Um, we'll be announcing the Mount Marathon status on June 1st. So keep your ears out for that to see if you need to start training immediately like me or um, keep things keep things a little lazy like I'm hoping. <laughs> We've delayed the Halibut tournament to a June 15th start date and um, still hope to have that going. But our Silver Salmon Derby is still on for August 8th through August 16th. And that's a great way to get out and down into Seward and social distance while still having fun and having the chance to win a lot of money. We also are looking to reschedule the Mermaid Festival. It has been tentatively rescheduled for the second to last weekend in August. And just across the board, if you have any questions or want to know what's going on down here, our visitor center is open. Um, it's physically open on the weekends 
and there's somebody manning the phones all week long. So feel free to give our visitor center a call. I'll throw that um, number in the chat. And also feel free to check out seward.com. We are constantly updating the businesses that are open, their hours, their availabilities, and things like that. Just the general, um, general tone is we're here. We're ready for you guys to come down. Weather's been beautiful and we look forward to having a great summer with everybody. So thanks, Casey. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. So there, there was a question um, that somebody had asked that, is there a possibility that Mount Marathon will still happen? There is still a possibility that it will happen. Um, currently, we're waiting for our board decision that'll happen in about 10 minutes. They're doing a vote. And then um, if they vote yes, it will have to go through city council for approval. If they vote no, we'll just postpone it till 2021. So I would say right now it's about a 50-50 chance. I don't have any more insight than that. As a runner, I'm also sitting on the edge of my seat because I don't want to run, but I want to start training if I have to. <laughs> yeah, so it's we'll, a huge event. yeah, huge event. And we'll probably know, we will definitely know by June 1st if the board has decided. Um, and then from there, if they say yes, we'll have to get final approval from the city council on June 8th. We'll keep our fingers crossed for you. Yeah, <laughs> thank so, you guys. Yep, yeah, thank you. So at the very end of the road, we'll come down to Homer, um, and right after Homer, we'll hop around the sound and go to Valdez. But for now, we're joined by Brad Anderson, and he's with the Homer Chamber of Commerce. I have you un unmuted there, Brad. Can you uh, hear us? How about now, Brad? Can you hear? Can you hear us yeah. now? Are you there, Casey, Brad? It's John. Casey, it's John. I think you unmuted me on accident. Okay. How about there? Is that you, Brad? Still, Jonna. <laughs> yeah. He's the two three zero number. Let's see. So all the all the call-in ones are unmuted. So Brad, can you hear us? No. How about right now? Yeah, you're you're good. Okay, good. Sorry about the delay here, guys. Um, <laughs> no, I tell you, I've I've only moved up here a couple of years ago, so I'm a new to Alaska, and I have really enjoyed the tour today. So Casey, thank you very much for putting this on. And I gotta tell you, today is the perfect example of why I love this community. Um, beautiful views uh, going across the Ketchmeg Bay over to the Cook Inlet and the volcanoes. It's just a pretty spectacular area up here. So um, definitely Homer is open for business uh, out in the spit. I would say we probably had about 70% of our uh, business is open right now. So everything is slowly opening up. Uh, most of our restaurants have some inside uh, seating available. Other ones are doing some outside seating. So there's a lot of different options for you for enjoying some of the restaurants we have up here. And basically our uh, Homer is really set up well for the kind of situation we're in right now. We have a lot of wide open spaces for families to come on down and enjoy some uh, extra special vacation time. Especially if you have an RV, if you want to come down here and bring your family an RV, we have amazing RV sites all around the, from the Bay Crest Hill down to the spit. So you can bring your family and enjoy that, that, that comfort of being all together as a group. And most of our restaurants have takeout uh, options available. So lots of good choices for you there. Um, uh, most of uh, and most of our businesses have put together some Alaska specials too. So, if you've uh, avoided coming down here because it's been a little bit too busy or too expensive for an Alaskan to come down and uh, enjoy some of the tourist events up here, this would certainly be the time to come down and take advantage of some of those specials. Uh, Casey, go ahead and if you do the next slide. Uh, one thing that we are really proud to uh, showcase this year, this is the 50th anniversary of Kachemak Bay State Park. This is Alaska's first state park. So um, we, in honor of that, we have here at our visitor center in, in downtown Homer, we put a giant wall map together that showcases 
all the different trails and uh, campsites and um, all the detail across the bay of how you can take advantage of what's going on in the park across there. Then also in the Homer area, all the different trails and, and special points of interest around this area. So when you come to Homer, please make sure you stop and take a look at that map because it really brings to life everything that we can uh, so proud of here and you can take advantage of coming down to Homer. Um, we also have a number of water taxis and things that uh, will will help you get across the bay very smoothly and you can do some rent kayak take over there and enjoy your uh, your time out across the bay. We have some really special events coming up that I wanted to make sure I shared with everybody. Uh, we are putting on our first annual Homer Halibut Tournament. That'll be July 2nd and 3rd. Uh, typically, we've done for the past 30 years the Jackpot Halibut Derby. We decided uh, last year to move away from that to turn it into a two-day fishing tournament. We've had very good success with our tournaments here, with our um, starting with our Winter King Tournament. And uh, we had to cancel that this year, but the prior year, we gave away over $173,000 in that fishing tournament and cash prizes. So we decided this is something we'd like to shift and uh, make that the, the halibut tournament a two-day event fishing tournament. We are also putting in subcategories for salmon, for rockfish, and then a grand slam prize for the boat that has the heaviest combination of all three. So that's going to be a lot of fun and a great way to showcase the Homer Harbor and all the fishing waters off of Homer. Uh, we also have the first annual uh, Homer Peony Festival coming up on July 10th to the 25th. Uh, Homer is the city of Peonies and that was uh, a few years ago. It was dedicated as, the, as a city for that because we have over 30 different farms up here that uh, are showcasing some amazing growth and uh, those flowers get shipped all throughout the world. Yeah. We decided this year we're going to try to put a focus on that and allow everyone to visit some of the farms. Some of them are putting together tours and workshops. Yeah, this would be a great time to come and see what's going on there. And our different art galleries up here are also doing some special themed uh, visit or tours of, of artists that are uh, showcasing different flowers. And uh, then to wrap up our season, we have the Homer Arts Festival, the Alaska World Art Festival coming up September 11th through the 24th. So that would be the perfect way to end the season up here. And for us, it's allowed us to extend our season out a little bit more into September. So uh, all the information on our events are right here. So, um, I hope that kind of wrapped it up pretty well. What's so special about Homer and the things we have going on this year? Thanks, Casey. Yeah, thank you, Brad. I'm looking forward to getting down there. It's been a few years since I've been down to Homer, so I have to get down there and do some fishing. So our last, uh, our last community that we're going to visit is Valdez. Colleen, I'm trying to, oh, there you go. Um, we're joined by Colleen Stevens. She's um, with Stan Stevens Cruises, but she's really a, an, amb an ambassador for all of Valdez. Yeah, so. yeah. Colleen? Thanks, Casey, and thanks for organizing this. And it's been great to hear from all the communities up and down the highway um, and rail belts um, and highways in Alaska, what's going on. Um, hope to do Valdez justice here. Um, so Valdez is accessible south of Fairbanks, um, beautiful drive down the Richardson Highway or across the um, corridor that Casey mentioned from um, the Glen Highway from the Palmer Matsu area across um, through Glen Allen down through the beautiful Thompson Pass and Worthington Glacier, which you see on your screen now, and then descending um, through the waterfalls into the Chugach Mountains where we have um, 360 degree views of the Chugach sitting right from our doorsteps here in Valdez. Um, we are slowly opening. We have um, a variety of businesses that are working currently today and some more that will be coming online as, as time goes on throughout the summer. Um, you can go ahead and advance the slide, Casey. Um, we are going to have a variety of trails, beautiful mountain trails um, that are already accessible. This um, photo here is Thompson Pass, um, but um, whether we have alpine hikes or trails that take you coastal, um, some out to Shoot Bay State Marine Park or up to um, Alpine Lakes. 
Um, currently, we are all out enjoying them as residents of LDs and um, want to welcome our visitors to do things um, and do so because we have great access to all of those. In addition to hikes and um, getting out into the backcountry, we do have kayak operators currently working. We have cultural experiences. The bear you see there is fishing right at our Solomon Gulch fish hatchery where you can walk the streams and learn about commercial fishing and hatchery processes. Also, we have um, some of our other cultural centers will be opening up as time goes on. Currently, Old Town Valdez, which is an outdoor um, cultural attraction, you can walk the area out there. And, and soon our indoor museums um, are getting themselves ready to open as well. You can go ahead and hop on there, Casey, to the next slide. Kayak operators are currently going as well as flight seeing operations. We do also have fantastic sport fishing. If you can bring your own boat down and launch it right in our harbor area, you can rent a boat if you are confident with your marine skills to navigate and fish on your own or our fishing charter operators are going currently, mostly for halibut at this point in time. If you bring your own boat, that of course opens up shrimping season to you as well. And then our derbies are um, functioning at this point for the halibut um, and looking forward to having lots of folks from Alaska come to help fill their freezers and enjoy the bounty of Prince William Sound. I'm jumping around and I'm not even doing it on the screen. Um, we have many restaurants that are open, our food trucks, which sometimes um, for us locals are some of our, um, we look forward to seeing them open because it gives us a little variety for winter, but um, they are open as well as our brewery. We have a brewery that opened in October and Veldi's Brewing is open providing um, can go sit and enjoy a flight or take a growler or crawler with you to go for your local hike or your fishing expedition. From shore, we have, Port Valdez is accessible in multiple places from shore, whether it's a bike trail that goes all along the shore um, over by the fish hatchery and the pipeline terminal or our docks and locations you can um, access. And there right now is some great migratory bird watching, um, wildlife from otters to um, bears to, um, stellar sea lions are being seen and also from lots of our docks this time of year since um, our fish hatchery has done their fry release we also have lots of hung hungry humpbacks um, perusing this um, port and you can see humpback activity straight from shore. As I said we have boats that are going out into Prince William Sound so all of that wildlife sightseeing for the rest of the summer will be available and then we do have our information center um, has already been mentioned in the chat will be opening around June 1st and the link you see on the page here, they're keeping track of who is open and what is going on in Valdez. And so please um, refer that to anyone that comes in your information centers looking for other places to go in the state. The one thing is, is already been mentioned, especially with smaller towns that get remote at the end of the road is health resources do, um, we don't wanna stress our health resources. So we would love to just encourage anyone coming to um, respect um, the community's needs and travel safely and um, keep care of each other and, and be kind so that we, we all can still enjoy our state and um, move about freely. And Casey, thank you again. Well, no, thank you guys. Um, so that is our virtual road trip. We hope you enjoyed the trip around the state um, along the road system here. And thank you to all of the panelists that joined us from around the state. A lot of us travel quite a bit to see each other a lot and it seems like forever since we've seen each other so it could be time for us to uh, get together and support a local brewery um, and as you've heard from everybody I think the thing to remember is that safe and responsible and healthy um, not only for businesses but also for our travelers as you get out and enjoy Alaska um, it's important that we do so with top of mind with the health risks and uh, and take the preventative measures um, another thing that you heard from a lot of the communities um, is that there's going to be a lot of travel deals out there. Uh, so make sure you check all the different websites of all the destinations around Alaska. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I know we had a couple of them that were answered um, through, the, through the presentation. We have a couple of minutes here. Um, but I, don't, I don't see any coming in. But again, thank you to all the panelists. I never thought we'd have 10 people who work in tourism that could actually stay on a timeline of five minutes each, but we did a great job there. Um, and thank you for all the rest of you joining us. So get out and enjoy your weekend. It looks uh, beautiful out there. It's a perfect time to hit the road and visit the communities that you just heard about. So thanks again. We appreciate it.